So you want you have to lean in, Jeff. I've been a bro. I'll scoot this way if you want to slide so you're in here. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Hello, hello. It's a good friend, Howard. He's flown over from America to just have a play with us. Have a good time. I'm Cheers. leaving as soon as we're done. An impromptu guest. So, but this is the worst pipe ever. Yeah, you see, you know, it's a bit of a just. It's a miniature pipe. It's, uh, yeah, when you travel all the time and your full time job is really entertaining people, you end up in over eat and over drink. So. Liquid bread, you know. So, are you able to tell what gin that is? You know, it's sweeter. I'm not a big gin person, but it is very sweet compared to where we're having to. What would you normally have? Some gin of choice. Probably tango. Pretty similar. Yeah. But Hendrix is probably one of my favorites. They do a nice Sevilla orange. The orange. Tangray orange. So, we need to explain where we are. We are in a pub. And a pub that we've been at before. It's like a, this is a, a first repeat. It's not. We, well, oh no, we've done the Knights Templar a few times. And we've done uh, the one in Chapman. Okay, scratch that. It's not a repeat at all. This is a. Uh, this is the. Juice. This is the most interesting <laughs> discussion ever. It gets worse. Um, <laughs> this gets is worse. this is the Duke of Argyle on. Oh, well, I assume it's the corner of Great Windmill Street in Soho, in London. And we are honoured to be joined by Howard Sublet, product owner of the Scum Alliance, chief product owner of the Scum Alliance. Just say product. I, I makes the most sense. I forgot the I forgot the chief. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a very nice surprise. It only got organised literally this afternoon. Yeah. So yeah, it's in town, we're in town. Yeah. yeah. This this is the magic of Twitter. Yeah. So I post and say I'm coming to town. And, yeah. And, and here we are. Bank said, Hey, you're going to be in town, and so that we ended up with this. Oh, of course. So it's good. So, happy accident. Yeah. It's a wonderful yeah. accident. Yeah, so we do have to say what we're drinking. We just want to say one for you guys. So, Jim, an unidentified sweet gin or something. Yes. An equally uh, nondescript vodka and lemonade from me. This is a Sam- so, This is a Samuel Swift pub, so. Yeah, it's there's no Smirnoff or anything like here, or absolute. It's Sam Smith's vodka. And I'm drinking a nut brown ale. Which is it nutty and brown? It's definitely brown. It is. So, yeah, see, Jeff's much more descriptive when it's. Yeah, that's nutty. Is it? Cold nuts though. Cold nuts. Cold the, best, nuts. the best kind, Jeff. Yeah. You like cold nuts though, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we anyway, to anyway, moving on. Moving on. So what's new with you, Howard? A lot's new with you. A lot is new with me. Uh, me personally or with me as uh, representing an organization? Well, let's see where it goes. <laughs> Start with what's, what's most interesting and we'll see where it leads. That's how these things go. We don't plan them. Um, personally, getting to marry my son this last weekend and then four or five weeks from now getting to watch my second son so I've got two boys that are going to get married so just to clarify how we did he marry his son <laughs> right. he, he performed the ceremony when his son yes. married I actually didn't think that your audience needed for me to be that literal well, um, you'd be surprised we're in England mm-hmm. yes that's true that's they're, true. they're quite picky it's true mm-hmm. that's true so how is it registered minister certified minister $35 in the internet that's all it takes it takes it um <laughs> I'm actually over here for a business conference this week. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to some interesting conversations with some leaders of organizations that have asked me to come. And so I actually have an organization that wanted me to meet there because they had board members that wanted to have a conversation with me about something. So it's always interesting to know what's that going to be. So you don't know? Yeah. Okay. You don't know me. (laughs) It's uh, so... Um, so what are you hoping? Um, just, just fundamentally for me, um, the world is open to abundance and not scarcity. And I tend to approach everything as a way to, to build bridges rather than walls. So any other organization that is interested in talking to me and talking to us as an organization, it's, it's always an opportunity for me to, to shake hands, to come to what we agree on, mm. and, and how do we make the world a better place together rather than competing on personal things, which is 
mostly that place where it's in the focus. Yeah. You've been building a lot of bridges recently. I'm trying. I'm trying. We've said this before, but I think Howard must be the most well-connected man yeah. I know in the adult community. Yeah. He must have an incredible memory for names and scenarios and stories. And I, I tend, It's gotten to the point I forget some names, but I remember the people and I remember, I remember something about them. Um, at our gathering in Austin, I was your friend Rebecca Trigger. Yeah was walking with me and I bumped into somebody and I had forgotten their name. But somebody else walked by and went, oh my God, you two should know each other. Because <laughs> you train dogs, you do cadaver dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your son just, flew, and I, and I, when they raised dogs, and so I made this connection of who they were and who, and she was, how the hell do you remember all that? Yeah. Well, I forgot their name. <laughs> and I remembered a lot so about them in the context. So there was something about it that, that sparked a memory with me in the world. Is that something you've always had, or is it something you've worked on consciously, memory? I, I think I've always been a person of curiosity, so I can't see something without trying to figure out why is it the way that it is. Yeah. We, we just sat down on those two stools, and one was lower, another side, I'm actually not taller. <laughs> one stool is lower, so I was trying to figure out why. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to look at everything and try to figure out the why, and not in judgment because one is wrong, but there's a reason for everything. So it means that I dig through the background or who it is and why did they get to where they are and how did they make the decision, which I think makes those things stick in my mind a lot better. Now, give me somebody's phone number and ask me, and I will lose a few numbers. I don't trust myself there. I'm likely to say you remember stories, stories, yeah. stories and humans and interests. Yeah. If, if like honestly, I'll be talking budgets and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars can be four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, fifty one point four million, and I'm not making. I just don't remember. Yeah, it's yeah. just I don't trust myself, so I write those things down. Yeah. But the human side and the stories I do remember. Right. That's, that's a big part of life. I think makes you you. Is that, that, that connect, you can connect to people. You want to connect to people first of all. Yeah. And then and then you can find something and retain. We we we're just in the middle of teaching a CSP course, and we spend a lot of time on connecting with people, coaching people, and coaching with permission and creating your health. And you can only really get permission if you've got the level of rapport and yeah. trust and empathy. You can only get that. Have curiosity and care for the person they want to be with. And establishing kind of memory. common ground, isn't it? And common struggles, common scenarios that you can relate to people through similar experiences. And even if you can remember your own experiences, you can relate to someone else's experiences as well. So yeah, we were looking at a um, <clears throat> candidates in an age recently. And this person was was a lovely person, but they came from a very traditional hierarchical background. Yeah. And we were talking to them about our company and the black organizational structure. And she said, I just don't get it. They have to have managers. So somebody has to tell them what to do in order for it to be productive. And I don't know why. I've never said it before. But I said, can I ask you a question? Do you fly here to Reading? And she said, well, yeah. And I said, on the highway, right? Yeah. I said, who is telling you what lane you can fit in? I said, there are thousands and thousands of those cars moving from point A to point B by the guardrails. There's a speed limit and yeah. there's edges of the road. But they're generally moving in direction. You guys are signaling each other. You're, it's like the epitome of self-organization with vehicles that can claim each other. Yeah, yeah. And yet they move so I said, now let's change the scenario and say they have to have a manager that tells you now you can move to the middle lane and now you can move that lane. How long would it have taken you to get to work? She said, I would have never gotten to here. I'm like, this is actually how self organization works. She's I finally get it. I know what it is. But she can see individuals working in a system moving from one destination as long as they're pointing towards something. She can finally see that. So but I'd actually never thought about that metaphor, that visual, but I knew she drove it. And she just was like, I cannot understand how this would work. So then I heard her retell somebody else the story again. Yeah. She's like, 
this is what some of the stories stick, stories are easy to pass on. And metaphors stick as well. People want to, you can. Well, something that I remember in my early days of CST, there was not so much my early days of CST, but when people started really complaining about the CSM, about it being a license to be dangerous, two day times of uh, they, they use the, the, the big car driving analogy about you, know, you getting a driving license and you're, you, you're, you're now in possession of a vehicle that can kill people. Right. Um, <coughs> statistically, most people don't. don't. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, deal, <coughs> you deal with the accidents when they happen. Yeah. You don't build a whole bunch of rules to prevent everything from potentially happening and go nowhere. You have to take a certain amount of risk. Yeah. So, but you do learn through experiences along the way about mm -hmm. through, uh, adjusting your speed limit, going too fast, getting, getting caught for speeding, getting caught for speeding. Hello, that's me. Multiple times. Yeah, multiple times for my sins, I've been caught. I don't know how you still got a license. I won't mention on this podcast more than once. <laughs> um, but yeah, you do. I know, I think I do have generally now lowered my speed. Of course, we don't. Known speeding on this podcast at all, so wow. amazingly, wow. yeah. But these things are there to adjust your I'm a Gary Lineker driver, <laughs> <laughs> the life experiences adjust, adjust your uh, outlook. Yes, okay, so that's cool. So, the ABC, are you there purely networking? Are you looking at any talks? Are you going to go to city sessions? Or I honestly have not even looked at the schedule. I, 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 I do have a talk there and the longevity for the community. I just hang out on hosting and a bank and it's it's very worldly and it's agile. So you have to be there. I mean you should have known about this. I see that I am shocked that you do. So you didn't organize it. No, no, the same people that uh, uh, Hugo Lorenzo does uh, experience at the conference in Lisbon. And then he started last year with this concept. He and I think Snowden and Denning and a group of them felt like that there should be some way to recognize companies that really kind of are exemplary and, and this move to the job. Yeah. And so the first one last year was we hosted it as a restaurant in the suburb of Chicago, I awards for their movements within an organization that are recognized. This year it's a little bit more formal than that. So uh, hopefully as it grows, you know, as things start, you start with something that's a but I understand I'm hosting a round table discussion on Sunday. So well, you don't even know about yet. I, I will know when I get there. Where is it? This Okay. My invite was still in the You're not even nominated. <laughs> nominated? Somebody has to nominate you for the award. Oh, wow. I don't want an award. I mean, these, these, are, are, these are cool. Real nice. Buy a plane ticket. I'm intrinsic in motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, -huh. uh huh. So you must be racking up a fair bit of travel and air miles and. Too much right now, but it's. It's all about choice. It's one of those things like this thing for me, and I think you guys know this is this wasn't a job. Uh, this was that thing that I had to go do. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm doing the things that I know I need to do to move the off of the organization. And this was a long discussion with my wife over are we both willing to pay the pain that yeah. this is going to cause on the bodies on the relationships so, I mean, you've met my wife. I, mean, you've met my I wife. think I have a couple of times, yeah, yeah. But she said the, the absolute best thing on hearing this, um, trying to make the decision to take this on and not as well. My wife said, uh, I, uh, I can live with you pursuing your dream, and I never see you. But I can't live with you being home and always wishing you would try. Yeah, yeah. So, I will support you chasing your dream. Yeah. So you're chasing. I was like, so I'm like, okay. So, thank you. She's at home now. Is she? Is she? She's home. Is she? Okay. Yeah, she is. Okay. Unfortunately, this is her favorite city. She would rather be here. I'm sure that Tracy is probably a listener of the podcast anyway, so I'm sure she'll be oh, hearing yeah. this. All the time. <laughs> All the time. She hasn't got the t-shirt yet. Oh, we could have given her a t-shirt. Oh, we could have gone. We had a t oh, we've got t-shirts with us as well. Have you got some back? Oh, we could have got some. Well, you'll see me tomorrow, next day, right? 
Oh, well, I, no, I'm, I'm going home tomorrow. You, you're around there. We can find a, find a way to get, to send it to the hotel or something. Come to the Agile Coaching Exchange at Pencil Box HQ where I'm giving a talk. We'll find a way to get you a T-shirt. Let me know. That might be, not saying anything, it might be a bit snug. snug. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Wow. But, uh, so much love here. <laughs> so much love. They're, um, yeah. They're, yeah. They're European thing. We had, yes. we, had yes. choose, we had to choose one size. We had to choose a small batch. So we yeah. just went uh, the I'm medium. just going to skip the shirt. No. Let's do that. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned Vienna. Yes. What can we look forward to in Vienna? Um, I wish I could rattle off all the tracks. But it's a change. I want to get in one step with New York. They've, they've eliminated the tracks at all from New York altogether, haven't they? Yeah, New York. The so, so our our gatherings yeah. are not dictated by a staff. Okay. It's a, it's a either a European gathering team or a uh, North right. yeah. They're volunteers, and the volunteers are deciding what they feel like they would like to create. So yeah. the tracks in Vienna. I don't think there's anything even related to Scrum. There's a lot of stuff in the lead startup and okay. stuff in, in that kind of ideation space. There's a lot of really interesting talks and stuff coming now in New York in, I think that's May of 2020. They decided no traps whatsoever. That is the first time. I don't think I've ever known a gathering that hasn't had some kind of theme or kind of to, yeah, to stream thing. There's a theme for the whole thing, but there isn't like tracks no. that you can follow. So it's literally just submit an idea and they'll. Yeah, assess it, yeah. yeah. Everything's up for grabs. Well, then the, the, the one previous in Europe in London, they had a dueling keynote, which is the first time I've ever seen that. Yeah. And we took the giant ring and split it in half and yeah. then basically compete in kind of a Scrum Master kind of role or an auditor role, which, yeah. is, which was really an interesting experiment. I, and I think that's one thing I really love about that is we're, we kind of give the community the ability to drive and create, innovate, yeah. and do something uniquely different. Yeah. So they're kind of all really a little bit different. Yet they're the same. I'm looking forward to the deal. I got my fingers crossed that I get a session accepted. You know what? Even if you don't get it accepted, you can still come. I can. I can. You mean my voice? Yeah. I do like you like New I do like New York. We are going to be right on it's, Times it, Square. It's downtown, isn't it? It's, we are on it Square. couldn't be any more, yeah. Yeah. Any more downtown yeah. than Times Square. And, and for a small fee, all of, those, all of those billboards that are up there, I can have your face on. No. no. A small fee. <laughs> I don't know what the city of New York charges for that, but. Anything's possible. I will not even upcharge that. I just want to see <laughs> what your face is on all the billboards. Yeah. I don't know who Do that. Do that. Yeah. In the podcast t-shirt. Yeah. There you go. Um, so, oh, so can we can we say anything or can we just do sneak like trailers for what might be going on in New York? Yeah. I have no clue. No idea. No uh, idea. That's going to be huge. I was going to say, with New York general, because we expected London to attract a bigger crowd because I, I suppose just for transport links, it's just sure. everyone can get to it. Would it be a similar thing with New York that you're expecting a bigger, almost planning for a bigger bigger audience in New York? We are. So in London, uh, we had a plan for 800 and we had nearly 300 on the waiting list. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in Vienna, we will sell out at 1,000. Yeah. Uh, in Vienna, it's a little harder to get to. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The best space rooms we've been running at around 15. We're trying not to do a 5,000 person experience. We really want to keep it at a reasonable size. In New York, is scheduled for around 2,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's big. That is pretty big. Cool. But we will only have like eight sponsors. You know, like if you went to the Agile Conference in, in, in uh, DC recently, I think there were 38 sponsors. It was it was massive. There were so many sponsors all there. And we just don't have to have that. So we're limiting the number of sponsors to make sure they add value to the people that are there. Yeah. And they don't distract from the learning and the focus more on the content. reason to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to sell ads so on the top of everything. They need to live. They need to. That's a good thing. So, but certainly on the back of the last gathering, which I think was a big 
again, we, we talked about this on a previous podcast was because Nigel was there and Nigel said how good Dan Pink was at the you know, that was Austin, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm kind of waiting. I know uh, well we, we we don't know what's gonna happen yet, but it'll be interesting to see if the names on the bill will be as big and as as um as hopefully compelling to the audience. Living it. Yeah. 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 Um <laughs> So this is so we're in the coming into fall. Yeah. Four. Oh, nice, nice uh, US reference. There, very good. Coming into there. And so coming towards the end of and you uh, coming towards the end of the year, and you've just finished a year at the US. Right. What's your highlight of the year so far? Um, apart from marrying your son. Um. Wow, one highlight. How about um, um, my partner in, in, in leadership, Lewis of Yes. Um, the, the board having us as a product owner and a scrum master to share the role with CEO. We're not really sharing the role CEO, but legally, we can do the government kind of stuff. But nice to have shared leadership. She doesn't. She's not over me and I'm not over her. It's not like a CEO or a CEO. We actually joined the whole uh, container of leadership. So we're pair leading. And, and the work that she's done internally to reorganize our staff and our team, basically get rid of all the functional silos and really flatten the organizational structure and turn it upside down. I mean, we, we drew cross departmental teams. Uh, focused on the customer centric for us as a trade organization. So it's not really product focused, but they're customer focused. Uh, thinking about the customer lifecycle as the thing for people that are within our organization or should be within the organization at the time. So it's not even limited. So, like when you think of a, a practitioner level person, you know, the practitioners within our trade organization, those that are practitioners in the world that have yet to move us. Yeah. So they're trying to find ways to serve them specifically to us as an association. Same thing for our guides, same thing for our leaders, for the foundation of the people, for people brand new to this actual journey that have chosen us as an education path or they've chosen someone else. How do we provide them with um, That's been a really interesting thing. And then we actually took a little with legal and with accounting and view it as a circle below everybody else. So we just made it really crystal clear that we're not over it. We're, we're in a servant leader position towards the team. Yeah. Um, and watching our teams kind of just kind of light out, you know, watching the speed in which they've been able to take an idea to get implementation and watching our community get excited about the brand new things that are coming out there. They haven't seen the ideas that have been like in somebody's back of their mind for a year yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. And finally had a chance to just do it. Did yeah. you think you'd have made such progress in such a relatively short amount of time? I felt like we made it. Um, I'm proud of what we were able to accomplish. Of course, I, I will always wish that we would have done more of it. But um, I'm proud of as far as we've gotten for sure. Uh, you surprised yourself when you look back at the TV show. So I, I'm surprised myself in this third thing. Like, um, you both know this isn't a role I've ever done before. The requirements for the role I didn't need any of them. <laughs> I just told him in the beginning I don't have all the things you're looking for. And I told him, <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. The, the job requirement, I didn't have any requirements. No. No, <laughs> I'm not. Okay. I, I'm serious. Um, and I told them, I'm not sure if, if I was in their seat, I would have kind of But I've got to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. This is one of their requirements. That wow. says a few minutes ago. It wasn't in the job description. That's <laughs> <laughs> how I approached it. So actually, getting the job is a little bit of a shock. I'm going to get to do something. But yeah, I, a lot of our listeners will be in organisations where they think a lot of change needs to happen, mm-hmm. and there's there's frustrated by the, the slow pace of change, organisational change, and you you yes, you'd like to 
of them more in them, but you've passed them for the line around to be sure. So consider it. Yeah. And, yeah, I, think, I think that we're, we're noticing other people noticing. I think that there's a lot of angles to it, but one of them is inspiration mixed with hope. I would say, yes, it's tinged with a sense of very true discrimination. It'll always be there. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not on you. Um, but yeah, there is an element that needs to We've been seeing things on social media. People who've generally had nothing nice to say. Yeah. Head to social media. It's taking notice. Well, I think that, if nothing else, discrimination is a standard bearer for what could be. How often, i got a question, perhaps a more detailed question. How often are you and Melissa on site together as a co-located kind of partnership? Not often enough. Okay. Um, in the beginning, we were, you know, we were there every day. I was, I was in Denver and she lives there. So we were spending a lot of time in the beginning. Um, the nature of my role is external facing, so okay. I have to be places and... Yeah, we get the jollies. <laughs> they don't know that it's that much. I mean, it's uh, flying with hey, You get to me with us. It's a jolly. This is a jolly. Uh, and her role is inward facing. You know, it's the how we're getting the self. Yeah, yeah. The nature of me being able to move the things in an organization. I can't necessarily be in Denver every day. Okay. Um, so we were together a lot, and then. What we're finding just recently, we just recently had a conversation last week about we've kind of gotten caught up in the busyness, the things that we're doing, and if we were what we're saying with each other. It was like things that are happening every day, we didn't even really know what's coming, and she didn't know things I was doing about coming. And it didn't, it's not in second guess, it's just like that was caught off the curve. And she was caught off the curve, and she was caught off the curve, and she was caught off we have to prioritize the time with each other first and foremost over other things. And so I think there's always going to be that nuance of you know, getting stuck in the busyness of what we do. And the one thing about Melissa that I really do deeply care about, and, and it, it always resonates with me, is, is her and I, we share the exact same principles. Right? Yeah. The, the, the values and principles are what we believe in are exactly the same now. I may aggressively go forward with it and move quickly, or she may take a different approach, but we're through the same direction. So we're in some we're on yeah. parallel paths, but I never question this is really wrong with it. Should yeah. Be so it's, it, it, it doesn't ever make a confrontation conversation. No. So that helps. So I, I've heard you both on podcasts. 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 You've been on podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard you on as on you do your own podcasts as well. Yeah, you talk about how you have very, very different ways of thinking, learning, acting, yeah. different, very different styles. Was that a conscious choice to have a pair that were very different, or did you just stumble across that? Wow. I don't really know. Um, the board hired me, and then we started seeking applications for the Scrum Master role, which the board so I, I was able to play as a board member. I was able to play a role of influence into that, but not the insider. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I didn't hire Melissa that the board did, just like they hired me. And we weren't really talking about that we had an ideal like personality. Mm-hmm. Like, we were looking yeah. for. I, don't, I don't think we ever consciously talked about that. Was, was the idea of oh, that person would work with you? Just looking for the best. I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm only asking just because of curiosity. From what I hear, if it was a conscious choice, then it was a very courageous choice, but one that I think probably needs to be made more. So I'm doing a lot of work on teams, and teams conventional with them all the time. need that diversity, they need that. Rubbing against each other, they need different opinions to be really successful, but it's not easy. And they have to work at it, and you, you guys have worked at it. But especially that product owner scrum master role has to, has to, in some respects, 
challenge, be able to challenge each other. But you want to push fast. We're going in the same direction. But yeah, but and almost there to be able to slow you down if you hang over how just to be your almost your agile conscience in a way. And that, but equally to be able to drive constantly drive new so ideas. Yeah. Safety outside of each other's yeah. But there has to be that mission. You've, you've stumbled across that. You've worked with that. I do know that one of the biggest things that they were looking for somebody with a really deep coaching background that Okay. Um, and so maybe by default we end up with finding that kind of a person. But I, it's weird because the way you said that about the traditional product owners all and the scrum master also. Our roles tend to reverse sometimes because we place in those foils. So okay. It may be an internal focus thing. So she had a great way to describe this where we talked about foreign and domestic policy. Okay. You always bring things back to politics, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's to make it real hard. But no, like, like there are things that are clearly just external facing. I, it's my arena. And things that are specifically about internal and it's clearly her. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are some blurred line in the middle that the external thing has a deep effect on the whole side. So if it's if it's foreign policy, I kind of take one step forward, she takes one step backwards, and we collaborate on those kind of things, and it's a resource. But a lot of times, like I'm the one sometimes fully playing the opposite role for her, like the scrum master role for her, and she's trying to do internally. And then we, we trade those roles. Uh, okay. That's interesting, um, yeah. Because I, I value what she has to say about her lens and the way that she looks at something. Yeah. Um, and then when she's looking at an org design, I think she values my experience and what I've seen in other orgs and how So what we came up with wasn't just out of her brain. We worked on it a long time, but she drove it. It's phenomenal, her vision. But there's a lot of fingerprints in me in that. Yeah. So, I think we play each other. Yeah, you can critique other's ideas, and that yeah, that's good because it comes from a shared experience and a shared background, which is yeah. isn't a bad thing at all. It's good. It's great teams of people. Yeah, yeah. They'll they'll flex their individual roles for team teams. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and you are a team, even though it's only two, and you're part of other teams. You you do work as a team. Yeah, we we a lot of times you hear. I will hear our language between the two of us talk about. I'll, I'll say, you know, Alyssa, I, I need to, I need to yield to you on this because this is your, this yeah. is your strength. Yeah. And she'll say, how this is, you need to take the point here because this is your strength and not mine. And we would just say those things to each other, kind of giving each other permission, just go ahead and step forward. Yeah. Because I'm looking to follow if you want this. Yeah, yeah. And she says the same to me, so. It's been, she's only come on since January. It's been a normal life. It's been hard. It's been hard. But Again, so the feedback, we only hear probably second or maybe even third hand about people that have been to gatherings or seen the two of you on stage or seen... And I think generally there, there's a, there's a yeah, that kind of chemistry or whatever you want to call it, mutual respects for the fact that you are a partnership and you are you do have the same... Um, direction, you've got the same vision for what you're trying to achieve, yeah. and even if you do, you know, flip flop between the roles slightly, you're both pushing in the same direction. Well, so, well, well, one, one, more thing, <laughs> one more thing, I'm not going to talk about. I think a lot of it has to do with Melissa first went to a gathering, she tells the story, and so this is her story, not mine. Her first introduction into this space was through a gathering, and it changed her career, changed her life. And people in the community affected her so deeply, she altered her complete career trajectory because of this organization in the community. And how the exact same thing happened to me about many years earlier of when I got connected to this organization and to its mission and to the people, it became like a passion project for the infection. So we both share that. Yeah. So if we don't come. I guess if you just got hired at this and it was just a job, yeah. it wouldn't matter. We both care deeply about what can we achieve over. There's a higher purpose to it. Yeah. I think that's I think that's one of the biggest things yeah. for it. Now, what were you going to say? So I was going to ask about one thing, but I'm tempted to change 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 topic a little bit. Is there a danger to be so absolutely invested in what you do? 
too close to the too close. To but you really care as well, just to you really care. Is there, is there a danger there? No. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, danger, the danger for me is that I genuinely care about each person and their family and everything else. That if I'm not careful, that it, it stops me from making a, a bold decision for us as an organization that I know may anger some. Yeah, um, upset some people. Yeah. If you make a decision for one thing, you're saying no to other things. So, and I'm constantly wrestling with it. So. If you were all just numbers, yeah, it wouldn't matter, yeah, yeah. right? But you do matter. You're not numbers, so that's the big danger for me: is that knowing the knowing the implications of what you decide and what you do. And I tend to think about things not just not just the rock getting the water in the pond, but the roots of how they interact with the sides. So does that cause? Paralysis, you see you're making choices, so there are other consequences to that. It can cause that. But also just acknowledging and understanding and knowing you're missing out there, it also drives me to understand. I just have to be aware that that is a, that that's a blind side of mine. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can get stuck there. But that is, that is a classic challenge for any photo is caring too much. And they have to be ruthless about the facts. Yeah, if they try and please everyone, they'll end up pleasing nobody. The better we'll see, the organization will suffer. Um, but you've got that value system in place, and you've got something to keep you honest, and you've got your, your reflection, and so on. So that's, that's that. All right, so now I was fixed to this little list of my demo, go well after we get next, which is 2020. Somebody asked me the other day, what do you think is going to happen next year? So I don't mind about 2020. Did you do that whole, orchestrate that whole question <laughs> just for that guy? Yeah. That's a question. It's just here all week. So, what can we look forward to next year? Because you're in this for the long term, right? So, you've got the long term vision, but what's, what's in your mind for next year? What are you looking forward to next year? Our team is finally, they've been going through a internally. I'm not talking about my own form in the store. Some of them are one or two are just really kind of hitting up before me, but once we kind of get the machinery, if you will, I know that's not a great metaphor for human beings, but the ability to do the effects of the sky's the limit for us to be able to do. There's a lot of things that we keep talking about that I would love to have for us to get to now, but we just don't have the capability to deliver. Um, I think this is diversify. Um, in the space, I think we'll see two omissions happen that we didn't expect um, between organizations that may have been seen as uh, enemies or frenemies of the past. Okay. Um, a, um, some more bridge building. More, more bridge building. Um, I think you'll see a continuation of programs like gatherings or regions. So like this this year for 20, the 2020 we doubled the amount of money that we had allocated for the region. So we're doing twice as many regions around the world than we did in 2019. Yeah. Um, we've substantially increased the amount of budget that we had allocated for guest speakers and bringing in the right kind of influencers so that they might give us them to We're sponsoring events that you would likely think that the Storm Alliance would do, like the Drunk Forum. for the Nordic Business Forum, where we're spending quite a bit of time and energy and effort helping to introduce a world that still doesn't really know what it's going to do. And then we're faced with that reality that they have to be able to So we're helping to reintroduce them, introduce to a new audience in a way that I don't know that other organizations can do. I mean, the job is to move the mission, transform the life, and help it. From still agro practices, principles, and values. We know that if we do that, a future world will have a workplace that's joyful or prosperous and sustainable. And so, if I keep focusing on that, I'm doing everything we can, and spending a little to get there, and trying, investing in research to try to prove something, investing in moving the role of a coach in the organization, and the organization is doing a higher role. I believe we can get that. It's, 
This has not been in mind the number of other transformations that have failed. And it seems like it's probably 100%. It feels like it's a Yeah, it's a high number. It's a really high number. And I've got some hypotheses on why, and I could be wrong, but that's the beauty of hypothesis, right? Um, one of my biggest problems is that everybody in the brother can call us this time. It's just a lot of the time that we know our right? Many years ago, I went to Fair and Temple Church, and their title was but enterprise energy transformation approach, <laughs> so something big and gnarly, right? They have presented at the last three other conferences as an expert in the space. And they wanted me to hire them, and I'm talking to them about the experience in the approach, and they're trying to explain to me that. And the conversation was just going to put me, I couldn't get my finger out of what the conversation was about, but something was a problem. And it was something that they coached for a year at one place. And I remember asking the younger stuff. So, can you, you were there here, you see. Yeah. So, can you, there's one team. Yeah. Can you tell me the name of the show? Do you remember their family? Really? No, no, no. Tell me about the children. They went, um, okay, the uh, uh, product owner was named Steve, and um, presented as an expert the last three agile conferences. I said, you've actually never been an athlete coach, right? And they said, no, big old tears coming down their face. I'm like, have you ever been a scrum master? No. What was your last job? I was a at the Macy's. And so, I connected them with somebody who's going to hire them as a six month coach somewhere. I still have sort of. They were very knowledgeable, but they didn't have the experience. Anyway, one of your peers turned around and told them I went. They were thinking they put them on a gig and it collapsed because they had no experience. It was pretty sure for us, I think it was to kind of determine who's really good and who isn't. Yeah. And then you take a VP of engineering that's on a company that doesn't even understand it. It has an apologist as out of the way. They're screwed. They're screwed trying to determine if that person is about for me. We as an organization are the first to have an agricultural certification since 2008. There is a difference in what a real shape of agriculture is compared to this some other picture. And my hypothesis is that if really good agile coaches, certified coaches, have a part of the client at the forefront of their job, that their job is to help them own their own agile transformation, that the coaches are there giving them the tools to be sustainable, that sustainable agility in those clients are achievable, rather than every time that they marry calling themselves an agile coach, every consulting company calling themselves agile coaches and selling a three step plan to a different And I'm afraid that if somebody doesn't step up and help be a torchbearer for something, um, more of the transformations would fail, as it would be a bad thing, and some new version of Rock 3 or whatever these things coming up, and it would be the new thing people to move to, the next shiny pull up. And I don't want that to happen in my life. Mm. I want the world to know that there's a difference in my real coach that understands that nuance between consulting and coaching, that they, that they know that the client's best interest or their best interest is not all the time. They believe. We can help that sustainable version of what can be organizations. Should I get off the soapbox? That's good. It reminds me of a joke. Uh, uh, a joke. It reminds you of a joke? No, not a joke. What the hell? That's the one thing, no. In a, in a course I ran recently, someone asked the question what's the difference between a scrum master and an agile coach? And uh, I was working with Jem, who's a try co trainer, and he said, oh, at the moment, about 300 pounds a day. <laughs> That's about the difference. It's, it's, the, it, like, it's like you said. If I put that on my job description, on my CV, it gets me in at this level. Scrum Master's are at the moment down here. And so it's, it is that complete misunderstanding of... It's just it's just an all-too-attractive job title right, that carries no credibility... Uh, not, not credibility anymore. Well, well, what I was saying then is that there's no actual... Not to jump through, but there's no credibility behind what... The Those two words. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And you can hire someone, like you said, that's never actually... How are you going to prove it? Yeah. How are you going to prove it? We've tried to kind of do research recently to help show the differences. I'm hoping some of our great coaches that are out there will help start writing some case studies for me. Is he leaving the building? <laughs> I think some data is there. I don't know that we have it all right now. Um, we're going to get some data. Get some data. And some stories. That's something I can drink to. I'm sure you can. Thanks Cheers, Howard. Cheers, everyone. See you soon. Sorry we bored you. <laughs>